Well, happy day, guys. So glad you're with me for another episode of Snap Political. Before we go any further, subscribe to the channel, share the video, give me some feedback, and let's have a conversation. Guys, I hope that you saw the GOP presidential election. It was really, really good. Who do you feel really had a true vision? Who do you really feel that said they want to see things from a holistic perspective versus just one, one scope? One scope. Who really stood up and stood it out that was in the building? Come on, who, who do y'all, give me some comments, give me some comments. Right, let's just go ahead and say it was Vivek. I think he did an outstanding job. Which brings me to the video right now that I'm about to do, because I'm like, what is going on with him? What What is going on? Are they attacking our guy? What's, what's, because is, is he stood up and speaking against all the foolery? Is that what's happening? Let's tap in, because this is new to me. This is new. I was a bit surprised to get an email noting that my LinkedIn account had been shut down. What? I wondered why, because actually a number of friends texted me saying they follow me on LinkedIn, that's how they keep up. They weren't able to find me anymore. Mm -mm. And so when I had my team get in touch with LinkedIn, here's the response that we got. I'm not kidding, I'm reading from this. Your account was restricted for sharing content that contains misleading or inaccurate information. Mm -mm. They said what it was. One was a video where in the video I said, the CCP is playing the Biden administration like a Chinese mandolin. China has weaponized the woke pandemic to stay one step ahead, and it's working. That was the first offense. Okay. The second offense was one where I said that if the climate religion was really about climate change, then they'd be worried about shifting oil production from the U.S. to places like Russia and China. Yet the climate religion and its apostles in the ESG movement have a very different objective. That was my second offense. Okay, so we know now, guys, that when you speak up and you speak out and you speak truth against these large groups that have formulated themselves to appear as if they're fighting for one thing, but underlyingly, they have other ulterior motives. That's a quote. And one thing I do like about Vivek, and he would be my choice for uh, for BP, is that he doesn't have a problem diving into these controversial issues. He doesn't have a problem talking about them with people, period, not just politicians at the debate. He goes in and he has some really, really good, interesting points of view and is not afraid to talk about them. I like the fact that he speaks up and speaks out. This is completely new to me. But we're seeing how your right to uh, freedom of speech is truly being diminished one video at a time. And apparently my third strike was to say this, the climate agenda is a lie. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. Mm. Those are my three strikes. That got me censored on LinkedIn. Wow. This is staggering. And so then we then push back and what do we say? We actually got specifics on how we're actually, oh, hate speech, misinformation, and violence. Mm. Those were the policies that I was actually violating. Wow. Now, I got a kick out of this. I'm going to be honest. I'm sure that we're going to get this escalated because I'm a U.S. presidential candidate. We have the connectivity to the people that we need to talk to to be able to get my LinkedIn account back. But I'm not bringing this about because it's about me. I'm bringing this up because if they can do it to me, they can really do it to anybody oh, it's already for making been done. statements about the climate change move. Good people, it's already being done on these platforms all across the board. It is being done. It is being done. Not just LinkedIn. Movement and agenda in this country that are grounded in fact and then express an opinion based on those facts to make a statement about Biden's relationships with China and criticize his China policies as a result. To say that that's going to be characterized as misinformation, hate speech, and violence per LinkedIn's terms of service. This is a Microsoft-owned company. It shows what's going on in this country. Mm. These aren't really the actions of private companies. These are so-called privately held companies or publicly traded private companies that are doing the work of the government through the back door, silencing speech that the government would never dare censor, could never censor under the Constitution but use the back door of tech companies to get it done instead. Wow, and that's exactly what's happening, guys. Oh my gosh, did not know it, didn't know to identify it as such, because this is, you know, I, and I tell you this all the time, I'm still learning. I don't know 
everything by far. And me being new to the political industry, I'm learning as I go. I do my research. I have preferent, I have per- preferential um, sources that I feel that are reliable. And I learn just like you learn. And I can say, you know, experiencing certain censorship on a particular platform, you know, we have experience. So this is real good people. And I know you hear many other um, creators, influencers say this. This is big. That's even more dangerous than direct government censorship in many ways. Mm -hmm. Because it is a hybrid of corporate power and state power together doing what neither one of them could do on their own. Mm -hmm. That's really what this is about. So Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about me. I'll get my LinkedIn account back, I'm sure. And if not, I'll still be fine, believe me. Yeah, right. I'm doing it because it's a symptom of how deep this cancer has run in our country. And believe me, we will stop at nothing in restoring free speech in our country, in restoring internet freedoms in our country. I've been writing about these issues for several years. I was actually one of the first people in this country to expose the way government was colluding with big tech to get done through the back door. It's dirty work. And so it seems like karma that they've come back and actually punished me for it in the form of censoring my speech about climate change and about China policy. But believe me, I'm not going to stay censored. We're going to get this done through the national revival that we're leading starting next year. Wow. I knew these topics were really, really hot, and I knew they were touchy. But I did not know this to me, this is like way big because this is a U.S. presidential candidate running for office. Like the most highest office in our country is the president. So why is it that him saying these things, speaking truths, and I'm sure it's not fluff or fiction. I'm every, every fact that he speaks, I'm sure he can substantiate. I, it's no doubt in my mind. Vivek Ramaswamy's experience with LinkedIn censorship sheds light on the growing concerns surrounding free speech and internet freedoms in the digital age. As a U.S. presidential candidate, he found his ability to express opinions grounded in facts, restricted under vague policies on misinformation, hate speech, and violence. This incident serves as a troubling example of the encroachment of free speech rights and erases broader questions about the role of tech companies in shaping public discourse. That's right. The Power of Big Tech The actions taken by tech giants like LinkedIn raise concerns about the immense power they wield over the information landscape. These platforms have become essential conduits for communication, networking, and the exchange of ideas. As private entities, they operate under their terms of service, allowing them to restrict content based on their interpretation of acceptable speech. This concentration of power in a handful of tech companies has raised questions about the implications for free speech and democratic values. The Intersection of Corporate and State Power Ramaswamy highlights the dangers of a hybrid of corporate and state power working together to silence dissenting voices. When tech companies collaborate with government interests or align with specific political ideologies, the potential for suppressing diverse viewpoints increases. This creates an environment where the government can effectively silence opinions without directly violating constitutional rights, leading to a worrisome erosion of free expression. Mm -hmm. Protecting Free Speech and Internet Freedoms The incident with LinkedIn underscores the urgency of safeguarding free speech and internet freedoms. Preserving an open and diverse public discourse is essential to a healthy democracy. Mm -hmm. Balancing the need to address harmful content while ensuring the protection of legitimate expression is a delicate task that requires transparent policies and robust mechanism for redress. The Role of Government Regulation The issue of tech company censorship Mm -hmm. raises the question of whether government regulation is necessary to ensure a fair and unbiased digital space. Yeah, I think that there needs to be some other level of accountability here. Because if we 
have a constitutional right to freedom of speech. And we're, spa- we're stating facts, we're stating information that you can go and back up based off of proof and evidence. You're not, you know, um, criticizing anyone or you're not like tearing a person down. You're not, you know, being toxic. You're really stating the facts and you're letting them have it in a very professional way based off of truth. And what he's saying is real. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. I think this is really, really big. Let's hear, let's listen to a little more and then we can talk at the end. However, any regulation must carefully navigate the line between protecting free speech and preventing the spread of misinformation or harmful content. Right. Striking the right balance requires collaboration among policymakers, tech companies, and civil society to develop effective guidelines that protect democratic values while upholding the responsibility to address genuine threats. Citizen Activism and Awareness Ramaswamy's response to the censorship serves as a call to action for citizens to remain vigilant and engaged in the defense of free speech. The incident demonstrates the power of citizen activism in holding tech companies accountable for their content moderation policies. I agree completely, and we're going to stop it here. I don't want to continue to, you know, go further. This is really, really you know, disheartening because it continues to show us, guys, it continues to show us that we have to really be mindful. Even if you're speaking truth, even if you're speaking facts, you have to be mindful. So where is the where is the freedom of speech here? This information is relative. I think this information that he spoke on is very relative because it opens up people's minds to definitely think from another perspective, but it's calling these people's bluff. It's saying, okay, wait a minute now. You know you have a no, you, you know that in these organizations and these groups, their agenda ain't what it seems to be. There's so much evidence out there that speaks against some of the climate change groups that speak to, you know, the oils and us doing things a little different. Now I know we have places we can drill right here, so there may be some difference in opinions here. But the mere fact that he's saying facts and he's saying truth and people don't want to hear it is a big problem. And he is the VP. I'm sorry, he's not the VP. He's running for president. He's running for president. I wouldn't mind him being the VP because y'all know who my number one pick is. You already know. But I um, he's running for the highest level of political office in our country, which is the president. So why is his account on LinkedIn? Oh my gosh, canceled, froze, deleted, whatever. He can't do nothing. So if it's on this platform, is he going to be um, deleted, canceled, froze? Can't, you know, his freedom of speech going to be violated on other platforms? So we have to think about this. And I like what this um, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy zone, you know, um, channel is saying in here saying that you know as citizen activism you know we have to be able to be the ones to speak up you know what are our rights as um, content creators people who are wanting to spread the facts and put out information so it can spread to other people nationwide worldwide to think from a different perspective and make a change because that's what it's all about good people Making a change, making informed decisions based off truth and facts, not what everybody else has got going on. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this content is really making you think. Now, I see quite a few of your comments and I comment. I do. Some, the foolery, I don't even deal with. You already know that. But some people that I comment, I don't necessarily, we don't always agree. You know, we don't always agree. And some, I think people are just commenting, you know, and don't really have much facts and don't have a basis of doing research. Go out there and do the research yourself, like I do. And yes, Fox is one that I, de- I definitely like. Please, if you want CNN, MSNBC, um, left-leaning person that supports the left-leaning news, then we really don't have much in common when it comes to stating facts and opinion because we're on two polar opposites, really. And I know a whole bunch of stuff about the Fox thing going on, blah, blah, blah. They definitely support the facts based off of the scope that I like, which is anti-Biden, crook criminals. They highlight that real big. And they're not the only station that I use. Nevertheless, I want you guys to think for yourselves and get out here and, and research and do the and do the homework. Because look at Vivek. 
I mean, come on, it's, it's ridiculous. We need to be able to speak up, speak out, and make some moves and do some things to move the needle and change the game because this is it's not going to change, guys, if we don't do something about it. Subscribe to the channel. Appreciate your support. I love you guys. Tune in for the next episode of Snap Political. Yeah.